Welcome to Eponym Creative Zone. My guest today is someone who loves the challenge of balancing the strategic needs of its client uh, with the creative expression of their brand. Pleased to have with us today uh, Venkata Giri Rao, the Chief Creative Officer of VML Weiner, Southeast Asia and India. Hi Venkata, how are you? Have you been holding up with the lockdown? Uh, awesome, awesome. Thank, firstly, thank you for uh, having me here. And uh, yeah, we've been holding up surprisingly good when we started off and got into this. None of us knew how it's going to shape up and nobody imagined that it would be kind of uh, going on for so long. So for that, we kind of adapted surprisingly quickly and got into group. So we're doing good. Yeah. Super. So first, I want to start by speaking to you about how it's been creating amidst uh, remote captivity. And some lockdown lessons or learnings, if you can share. Okay, Work-wise. Okay, so I can talk to you at uh, multiple levels. At an agency level, things have uh, never been better, in fact. We've been on our uh, best work streak in the last three, four months, uh, which uh, kind of surprised us also. Uh, because uh, the moment we got into, uh, what do you call, work from home mode, stuff started moving faster, in fact. Uh, there have been a lot of campaigns that kind of really went big for us, went viral, a lot of client appreciation mails, a lot of new challenges coming in. And uh, it's been like quite incredible, actually. So at a, uh, it's also because I think uh, we got into the lockdown and we've been onboarding a lot of clients, new clients that we won, right from Colgate to Dell to Pepsi Foods to Cipla. And these are all huge clients. So... The opportunities are huge and they also push you, right? So it's it's just that we entered the, this particular lockdown with momentum like never before. And we've also managed to convert a lot of these opportunities into uh, very interesting uh, campaigns and uh, buzzworthy work. So that's been good for us. So that's at an agency level. And I can tell you personally, for me, I've been like thriving. Uh, I'm enjoying the <laughs> lockdown like... Uh, I wouldn't say lockdown, just work from home uh, because uh, firstly, I'm a homebody, so that's a personal thing. But um, I think one of the things is that it's, it's become, uh, it's made work far more focused. Uh, when you're at uh, office, what happens is you tend to get involved in a lot of drive-by shooting kind of uh, problem solving, right? You're just walking past and somebody ropes you in, asks you a question and you get in and you solve a problem. So... Uh, it's, it's, it's just interruptions throughout the day, right? Versus now you can kind of block off time between your meetings and you really kind of, there's no interruptions in that sense. So you tend to be more productive and, and it's kind of cleaner. So there's, there's a lot less, uh, what do you call it, disruptions in that sense. So your thinking is more pure and your, your output is far better. So I've been like really, and plus of course, the normal stuff like no travel and... Uh, right. Yeah, so, stuff uh, like Tell me also, speaking about clients, how have clients approached this entire situation? Yeah, so I'll come to that. So clients are, uh, it's been a very interesting kind of a, uh, like I said, it is, when, when we got in, nobody kind of expected it to be so long, right? And I right. think the one learning that everybody's been getting is that things are changing, right? Uh, literally, you're expecting it, okay, fine. So the, you, you get in and then you kind of, say I need to react in a certain way and then you realize a month down the line you realize this is, this is going to be a little longer than I thought uh, I don't need to be knee-jerk right and then so, so from a knee-jerk reaction it becomes a short-term reaction to be, become then you start thinking mid midterm then suddenly you're hearing maybe this will continue for two years who knows how long right then you're suddenly right. thinking long term right so I think uh, li like us I think even clients have been kind of trying to cope with this uh, and purely from a work from home situation, it's kind of interesting. I think we, we, we kind of, you end up having a lot of calls where, you know, you see it's like work and uh, your personal life colliding and that happens in the client's end, that happens at your end. But of course, everybody's kind of understanding. You see, you giggle, you laugh and there's a kid that cries or, and there's a spouse that comes in. I mean, uh, uh, at, at one point it used to seem like, okay, fine, it, let's all, uh, it, it's still new, right? So we're still right. kind of. Yeah, but now it's kind of okay, fine. It's just, it's, it's mugged down. So you get to the stuff, the program, right? So, so clients have adapted well. And even teams, for instance, internally, in the, in the agency also, it's been varied. I think, frankly, this is going to be 
because people are working from home, it, it is entirely a function of one is your personal preference. Do you thrive in, uh, what do you call, uh, company or are you kind of, do you thrive in solitude? Then it also depends on what, uh, where you're stuck. You're working right. my and, and if you're kind of, I've got a lot of people at home, then it's also whom you're stuck with. So I think it varies. That's one of the things. So stress, that that's one part to it. Then of course there are stresses. You can you can sense it. It is not easy. People living on their own, managing their without maids, managing their home stuff. So uh, you're having conversations every day. So what's also robbed? Uh, I think what has happened is that because because of the Zoom fatigue and call fatigue, people end up calling each other only for work. So in office, there's a naturally, there's a bit of a pressure cooker gasket situation where the pressure gets released because of these casual conversations, water cooler conversations, over tea. Right? You just kind of interact as friends. So all that gets kind of reduced, right? So so it becomes a little transactional. So you, you detect those kind of stresses in the system and you're kind of trying to make it fun, make it light, catch up. But yes, it, it, it is, uh, like I said, if there's one thing that has kind of surprised me, it's how productive we've all managed to be in spite of everything else and how uh, work seems to have kind of become far uh, bigger, better uh, in this lockdown. Right. If you can take us through some of your work, work done amidst lockdown, including your work for Colgate and how it all came together. Sure thing. Uh, like I said, I think uh, there are quite a few campaigns uh, I can talk. Uh, for instance, we did a recently we did a campaign for uh, parachute advanced, uh, something called the uh, Chumpy Beats Challenge. So basically, uh, I think Indian youngsters are considered among the most stressed in the entire world. Even before lockdown and post COVID, it was it only got worse. Everybody was kind of uh, uh, nowhere to go. You're stuck at home, and parachute is a bit of a legacy brand. So the challenge is how do you connect with them? So we kind of uh, dug up this uh, hair massage ritual called the Chumpy and we kind of repackaged it for them uh, as a TikTok challenge, right? It's an old, old world uh, ritual. We repackaged it as a new age challenge and went to where the youth are on TikTok. So I think it just blew up, right? In just two, three days, it kind of uh, hit some uh, 13 billion uh, views, right? And now it's at last count, it's some 27 billion views and the number of people, it's in hundreds of millions in terms of hashtag uh, videos and uh, usage and stuff like that. So uh, that's one of the things that kind of uh, completely kind of uh, just took off. Uh, uh, we were also surprised. Then of course, there's the Colgate uh, dentist for me. That's a pretty interesting thing on the lockdown. That's one of the things that I was talking about midterm, long term, right? When you get in, of course, Colgate was keen to do a, a film talking about spreading uh, their smiles and stuff like that, which we did, of course. But what was interesting was that uh, we had an inkling that this thing is going to go on long. So the question is, yes, uh, you're not going to be able to produce much stuff. But more importantly, is there a, this whole thing about essential services were what were allowed? And a lot of things. And, and it's funny that uh, dentists were not part of the essential services. right? And, and secondly, if you need to look after your uh, dental hardware and, and care for it, uh, with this COVID fear, you're not going to be feel very comfortable going to a dentist, right? So we said, basically, how do you kind of uh, allow it? We, I mean, we thought that uh, uh, seeing a dentist or caring for your teeth is essential. It can't be a non-essential service. It is essential, right? As a Colgate, as right. a brand that's up to your smile. So we fundamentally, we built a plat platform. We kind of enabled um, people to consult dentists. So Colgate pulled in a whole uh, panel of dentists, hundreds of dentists uh, across India. And we kind of literally launched a platform within weeks where you could uh, seek out consultancy on the phone, on, uh, on, on video, uh, reach out to a dentist, show them your teeth, uh, have your teeth looked at. So it's a, it's a very good example of a, of a product, of an FMCG product suddenly behaving like a service, right? Right. which is what digital allows us to do, right? And it's a, and BML does a connections, we are very, uh, what do you call, hard driving on the uh, connected piece where Today's consumer is connected in a million different ways, right? To each other and to brands. So everything becomes a touch point for us to push the brand uh, service uh, experience, right? And this kind of, this came up, this was a proactive initiative, but the client kind of loved it. And it just happened in, in two, three weeks. It kind of happened. So uh, that's one for uh, Colgate. And then we've done a couple, we just did a, a campaign for um, 
I uh, what do you call IDBI Federal Life Insurance, right? So they wanted to uh, talk about uh, children's insurance. So what uh, contextually right now the fears, people's fears are at an all-time high, right? So while it does seem like you wanna think about stuff like life insurance and in a more serious way, and you know you're you're considering your options, but the question is what is it, what is the positive message that we could give? You don't wanna scare right. people into because people are already scared, right? You don't wanna right. scare them in that sense, right? So uh, we were very uh, keen to uh, what do you call make sure that the message was very positive. So the whole point about children is that they are fearless, right? While parents are fearful of the future, children are exactly the opposite. They're fearless about the future, right? So when you, think, when you talk about jobs, you talk about losing jobs, machines coming, automation, you start worrying about that. When, you, when there's pollution, of course, a lot of fears are legit. Uh, there's pollution and there's water shortage and we all worry about it, right? But kids are kind of innocent in that sense and they're, they're, they're super bright and enthusiastic and they look at the, uh, they hear about technology and they get excited, right? They see it as a solution. We think of the problems, they think of the solutions, right? So, so for us, that was a very interesting dynamic in that sense, right? So uh, we really kind of um, thought it would be great to contrast these opinions, these attitudes, in fact, right? Parents versus. So we did a, a campaign based on uh, the children's attitude compared to the parents' attitudes. And the entire campaign called uh, Future Fearless, right? How to be future fearless. Uh, Sachin is a brand ambassador. So that also was done in the lockdown. We just finished filming the camps. So the campaign's gone on air. So uh, there's a lot of interesting, and, and we are kind of, again, for Dell and stuff, there's a lot of campaigns happening. But like I said, it's like suddenly because we got all these brands on board in the lockdown uh, while we're working from home, your Dell, your Colgate, Pepsi Foods, Sipla, uh, yeah, the, the opportunities are much bigger. Right, um, like even right. Uh, you, even for uh, Sipla, we did a campaign for a product uh, for a specialist pregnancy care brand, Mama Expert. Right, there again, it's very interesting because there's a whole side to moms. Like this whole whole mom baby world is a shiny happy world where it's all positive. Everybody's happy. The baby's <laughs> smiling. Mom smiling. But when you when you get down and check on the internet, there's a side to motherhood that. Is out there, but that doesn't get acknowledged in, in 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 public conversation, right? And we felt that it was important for us to, and women feel guilty for it for feeling some of the thoughts that moms feel. I mean, about about having a kid, and it's, it's natural to feel so, right? But moms feel guilty, right? And the, it's a huge burden on their heads. Not only are they feeling extreme duress, uh, but they're also feeling bad about feeling the duress, right? So I think there again we said that we need to kind of find a way to take the guilt, take the burden off moms. So our entire campaign was based on actual conversations on the net, uh, right. real conversations, hard conversations, and how we dramatized it in a very interesting uh, form, right? Uh, for moms with love. So the whole point is to show the real sides of moms, the real side of moms. And uh, I think we are talking to millennial moms, younger moms, and for them, they don't want the shiny, happy um, version of things, right? They can yeah. handle the they, they, they can give out the truth, they can belt out the truth, and they can handle the truth, right? And that's where the authenticity comes, and that's where you're able to connect. This is where our entire campaign was based on the real side, right? The side that doesn't get spoken about. Yeah, that's, so that's some of the works, just some of the works that we've been doing, even Pepsi Lays, I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, we just like last week, it went uh, viral. There's a, uh, uh, what do you call, Heart Works campaign where they, we created digitally, we created a called out a lot of brands that are doing good work during the lockdown, right? And we thank them, dedicated packs, designed, lace packs, designed specifically, and we're calling out. So on social, it's, it trended on Twitter. So oh, I think, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, so it was a pure Instagram campaign. So so uh, it, it's like different kinds of campaigns, whether it's a TikTok thing where it blew up on TikTok or it's an Instagram thing, or it's like a, a bit more... Uh, uh, of a brand restage or a relaunch where you do a film and, and do that. So uh, there is a lot of action happening. I think we can never be as busy as we are now. Amazing. So this entire scenario has brought in a great deal of upheaval in the way we work. So where do you see the green shoots of opportunity here for the industry? Uh, so that's pretty interesting. I think, see, one of the things is uh, green shoots suggest something new coming up. And while, of course, that is also happening, I think one of the things is also there's a bit of a reprioritization happening, right? 
because what happens is marketing behavior changes uh, customer behavior in that sense, right? And uh, money again changes attention. So we are just kind of trying to figure out basis this lockdown because of this work from home because of the fear how customer behavior is changing right so suddenly there are some categories like literally like a yo-yo right some categories have suddenly unexpectedly kind of shot up right in terms of uh, people wanting to buy people wanting to engage uh, e-com uh, you know personal tech a lot of different uh, categories have suddenly become very uh, hyperactive uh, at the same time, there are some categories that are kind of taking the back seat. So it is a matter of reordering priorities. Uh, so yes, there is a, uh, the interesting thing is that for digital, how it's translating is that I read somewhere, it's a very interesting quote that they said that uh, it's almost like three years of uh, digital transformation got uh, enacted in three months, literally like in three months, three years of transformation happened, right? So it's been great for digital and for us also VML Vana, we have a, uh, uh, what do you call uh, CX practice, which is platforms, big platform builds that we build for clients. There's an e-com practice, and we're seeing uh, suddenly there's so much traction happening, and we're able to give solutions to clients. Uh, where three, four months back, uh, it was still just kind of taking off, or we had a robust uh, practice, but now it's like suddenly everybody wants time for that, right? So I think in terms of how the green shoe, green shoes, there's a lot of interesting opportunities that are coming up, right? So. Even in terms of uh, business opportunities, I just talked about, right? right. Uh, even in terms of uh, even in terms of uh, brand opportunities, right? A lot of brands that have been doing kind of uh, work, uh, not necessarily to sell their uh, stuff, but also to get into the good books of people. I mean, that that's a old world way of saying it. But I think brands have been winning a lot of uh, love from um, uh, customers, also, right? So there is that that part of, to it also. And I think in terms of one more green shoots of opportunity, slightly a different kind of opportunity. But I would say that smaller budgets is a good opportunity, is actually an opportunity because it forces everybody to focus, mm -hmm. right? Whereas when you don't have the discipline of smaller budgets, you kind of want to chase everything. You want to be always on, you want to chase every topical day, you want to do everything for every occasion. Whereas now you say that, listen, I've got... I've got all these challenges and I've got just this much budget. What do we do, right? So it forces the client also to be kind of much sharper in focus. It forces us also to be far more creative in that sense, saying that, okay, this is our one shot. We are not going to get a second and a third shot in this quarter or in, this, in the first half of the year. So it also forces us to be creative, which is, which is also cool. So I think there are a lot of opportunities coming up. I think it fundamentally is a function of uh, which side of the opportunity you're on or your agency is on and that's what decides how good or bad you feel about it but I think there is enough opportunity I think even clients also like categories like like I said hygiene is like becoming so big and everybody's getting into hygiene right like just the other day I read that Asian Paints is kind of doing some toilet cleaners and uh, floor cleaners so everybody's getting into hygiene there's a face right. uh, sanitizer so that's become a huge thing literally right so uh, you could argue that that's a temporary fleeting thing, but it is what it is, right? And now it, as, as a thing, it, there is a need right now. People are, the biggest fear that is as we open up is people are having to get away, get out of their co cocoons and step out into the world, right? You're having to actually go out there, right? So then what all does it mean? How do you reassure people? What are the fears that are emerging, right? So there's a lot of uh, different ways of looking at it uh, besides the digital transformation piece. But I think fundamentally, like I said, it is, Everybody is tracking behavior, customer behavior to kind of figure out how, what do we do with it and how do we cater to what's happening out there. Right. So uh, according to you, what has this entire landscape, this entire situation taught us about brands as they navigate this really volatile uh, landscape and you know, what to say and how much to say remains as a question right now. It's a very, uh, very interesting question. Um, actually, it's a bit of a reckoning actually for brands, if you ask me. So there's this very, very uh, interesting quote by Warren Buffett. It says that it's when the tide goes down is when you realize who's been swimming naked, right? So it's kind of like that, right? So suddenly the tide has gone down and, uh, you know, you, you can see brands, uh, Kind of being exposed for what they are for good or worse right 
So I would I would say just to give you an example, right? I mean, and I'm talking about a very pure personal thing, and it was the first thing that kind of it was literally like a almost like a knee jerk reaction. It was so fast out of the gate when LVMH said that uh, four of our perfume uh, brands factories we're gonna convert them into manufacturing sanitizers straight off the bat. Those early days, right? Right. And I was really stunned because LVMH, like, it's okay, fine, it's a super luxury brand. At some level, you're saying, okay, fine, is it really necessary? You're thinking, is it, is it, uh, is, 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 does the world need luxury and it's a consumption excess driven world? And we need to be thinking about the environment. That was my space about LVMH. I said, it's okay, fine. It's like, yeah. Uh, but the moment they did this, it was like, whoa, you know, a new respect. I mean, they said it was, it's not like they did a campaign, nothing. And, and the, this, the speed of the decision making, right? So suddenly like LVM had said, okay, fine, solid. You're not a brand, you're a solid corporate citizen in that sense, right? And I think that was a bit of a, it set up a race. It literally an arms race. The number of companies that immediately after that stepped up and say, uh, Diageo and Coke and stuff like that. A lot of people couldn't donated money. But I think the, the key point is that people, a lot of brands and organizations stepped up and became corporate citizens, you know? Good corporate citizens, and that was a kind of a that is the first step. It was really cool, right. you know. Uh, and and because this has been something, especially for the millennials, and we've been seeing this in the last many years that brands that do good or that speak the good language are what that find favor with the millennials, right? But now here was a time when it was a truly it was not a marketing playbook at all. Out of the it was a, it was an opportunity for you to step up and do good, right? So, um, so a lot of brands did that and it was pretty good because there was a website that came up saying, did they right. so People were keeping track. You could go there and enter any celebrity's name, any brand's name, and it would surface whether they did, did they help for COVID or not. So the world was keeping track. And I'm sure that a lot of guys who did the genuine thing stepped out and without hesitation went out and did the stuff. They're going to be remembered by people firstly. Right. So I think. There was a lot of work washing happening because, of course, this cause uh, advertising and stepping up and doing good. It had, it, it had become fad almost as in a lot of brands were jumping onto the bandwagon. But this one, this opportunity kind of exposed. This is what I meant by that. The tide went down and it suddenly showed who was swimming naked, right? There were right. the brands that really stepped up and put money where the mouth was, right? And I'm going to contribute $100 million and stuff like that. So this suddenly exposed that stuff. So that that's on one side, okay? That's as a as a response to an outstanding uh, crisis, how can companies behave? Especially, uh, that's another trend that we are seeing because internationally also governments are trying to pull back or companies are stepping up and doing what governments used to do, right? Uh, of course, it is, it's not like a set in stone. There is um, a lot of friction between factions. But the thing is, the companies are doing what governments should be doing, right? And so this was a great thing. But having said that, coming down to uh, the business of bread and butter and building brands and uh, selling stuff. Uh, there again, you could see the messaging, how the messaging changed, right? So, for instance, like straight off the bat, the first reaction knee jerk was, "We are with you, right? Oh, we are we are in this together, you and us, and let's smile and keep smiling and keep your chin up." And I think Facebook did some Droga Pi did some very cool stuff for Facebook uh, using that uh, poet. Uh, very powerful stuff. So I think there's a there's a suddenly there was a speed of a lot of ads trying to say, hey, we are there for you, we are there for you, we are there for you, because nobody knew what was happening, and they said, okay, fine, I can't not be heard out there. Like right. everybody's talking, so I need to jump. You know, I it's literally like a tower of Babel, and I need to add my voice to it, whether it was uh, needed or not. But uh, uh, there were even spoofs of how similar all those ads were. But that was the first first step. Okay. And from there, it kind of went to now, what can we do for you, right? So a lot of brands said, okay, fine, now all that is okay. Now we need to get down to our business. How do we do something? How do we uh, sell our product? How do we push our brand, right? Now, there's also a certain seriousness to it, which uh, because everybody was saying that it's COVID time, it's COVID time, how can we, how can we? But then there's also uh, the next phase is why so serious? There are a lot of brands that said, Hey man, we can't stop laughing, right? Like your um, uh, Budweiser's brought back the What's Up uh, campaign, or Cruise Light did, uh, you know, the the Zoom uh, what do you call it? background generator. Um, so a lot of uh, fun stuff. Like you have to recognize you can't be morose all the time, and people are right. under obvious stress, right? 
So in the, like when I say that, when what can I do for you? I, I, the, the campaign that would fit would uh, the the chumpy campaign that I talked about for at Parachute Advance did, where right. we said we're gonna help people beat the stress. So there's a role for the product, and there's a there's a role a specific thing that would do for our customers that would fit there, right? And from there to treating it lighter, saying that okay, it's it's okay. This is here for a long time, and we don't need to be morose anymore, and we can all have a laugh, and we can kind of take it lightly. And then also, then the thing is now. I mean, suddenly, if I don't know if you've seen the womb stories uh, that came out recently, epic storytelling, right? The open uh, during a lockdown, it came out because there's been a certain kind of budgetary constraint, situational constraint, lockdown lockdown constraint that was defining how we behave until so, until now, right? You couldn't go out and shoot, and all these handheld camera shoots and remote shoots were happening. But here, suddenly, one epic storytelling right like like nobody could tell that this was not done during uh uh you know a lockdown so uh that's also back so i think i think what is happening is that now as like i said no that that thing about when you started it you're kind of trying to understand how what's what's up and how long it's going to last so from a three, from a one month thing to a three month thing to a six month thing to a two year thing now suddenly you're saying that okay, this is going to be it, and we need to come up with campaign, right? Right. Likewise, like yeah, even like we have our uh, uh, Dell. It's a very interesting exercise. Our kind of client, uh, they have a huge uh, campaign coming up uh, for the second half of the year, and we've seen that like three months. We've seen the messaging: Do we? Don't we? What's going to happen? Not going to happen. And finally, it's getting right. And it is. It is. It is. It is a function of how unstable things are, how things are changing on a day-to-day basis, right? So I think it's kind of coming out. So I think overall, one of the uh, learnings has been that uh, at the end of the day, that, that thing about what I said is that did they help dot com. Uh, it's kind of cool because you're now you're really reconsidering what are the brands that are uh, really serious about this and what are the brands that are kind of playing, you know, um, right. Yeah, there are a lot of opportunities for us to, uh, what do you call, uh, put out messaging. But I think we just need to evaluate because people are going to are gonna see through stuff right now, right? And now it is the time where you kind of get down to the brass tacks. All, all superfluous stuff is out. You are kind of say, this is skeletal, this is kind of survival. And I'm going to just kind of say, uh, this both from a customer point of view and from a marketing point of view, saying that, okay, fine, now how do we kind of just make sure, keep our eyes on the ball and, and, and on the goal and we kind of achieve what we can, right? So it's kind of changed for the better, I would say, in that sense. Amazing. So uh, lastly, as businesses get affected, ad, ad budgets are the first that uh, kind of see a beating. So how, what, is, what would be your message to agencies on you know, how they should remain relevant? Uh, that's an interesting... Uh, see, this is something that's been... The writing's been on the wall, frankly, last uh, many years. Like, I think... Uh, Two, three years back, I think the spends on digital were uh, bigger than the spends on, on TV globally, right? That's one. And we've been seeing how more and more, like I said, right, the, the money goes where the attention goes, right? And the attention has been shifting to digital for the last few years, right? Uh, in terms of the number of hours that the average person spends on digital uh, on, the, on a screen, it's just going up. It's just going up with each passing year. So I think clients have been kind of uh, poor, has been kind of uh, slow to wake up. Clients, agencies, everybody, right? Every brands, a lot of agencies also have been kind of slow to acknowledge that, have been given a bit of a wake up call in that sense. So it's a it's a it's a bit of a uh, rude awakening. And I think the only thing that can, and that's not just a case at this time, that can save anybody is that if you're a learning organization, no, if you're a, learning is a way of life. Then I think that's the best way you can cope because there's no set ways. You just need to learn to respond fast, respond well, right? And I think the only thing that can save us is that we are ever learning in that sense, right? Just to tell you how quick, how how drastic, how fast change happens. I was just telling you about this huge uh, campaign we did for uh, uh, Parachute Advance, Chumpy Beats on TikTok. Huge, spectacularly huge campaign. And we were like said, yes, we crack this uh, platform. Let's kind of you know, spread the learnings to the entire team, to the agency. Let's go talk to clients. And next thing you know, TikTok is off the air. You get what I'm saying? So right. that's how it is. That's that's how brutal and uh, fast change is, right? Now, that's fine. Okay, fine. We, we mastered it. Now that's out. Right? That's not to say it's completely out, but for now it's off, right? 
so what next so it is like that you have to be so you literally have to be on the transformation treadmill in that sense right as a as a thing saying that it is not a that pace of change does increase earlier you could once some change happened then you could say okay for the next couple of decades it's going to stay this way right the color tv came and it took some many decades now like change happens like it's hard to believe that this 10 years back is when the i mean the 12 years back 2007 is when the mobile phone the true mobile phone was launched apple iphone right so the trend, transformation tread, treadmill is kind of you have to be on top of it right and you have to you have to keep running so fast right like the it's changing the very notion of brand building like vml vana globally if you look at how wendy's has been transformed as a brand from a old world uh, brand in in a world where burger king and kfc were were cool and doing all the noise when these came from from behind and today that's that's a brand that that customers ask wendy's to roast them right. on twitter right where they on on twitter and they ask roast me and wendy's replies saying that why don't you ask your 11 followers to roast you right <laughs> that is that is where the brand is at and that is brand building and it's most sublime if you look at how they uh, this year's uh, grumpy grumpy campaign on uh, fortnite uh, how wendy skilled uh, fortnite it was insane nobody would have thought it it won the grand prix precisely because of that because the jury said that uh, uh, you know it, it shows us where advertising can go right so the very notion of what a campaign is or how a brand can be built has changed right so that's one thing right and that's 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 just campaigns i'm also talking about how you deliver your product how you deliver your exp- experience brand experience that's one thing right the second thing is that lot of brands lot of the new brands are and we don't realize it a uh, lot of brands let's say uber and airbnb they've been they've become brands first and then they talk about traditional communication they became brands right. overnight as experiences like before you knew it they were huge brands they were delighting the crap out of people right and they were just using the internet and moving very smart guerrilla stuff and under the radar and they just built themselves into huge brands and only then they started saying okay now we need to communicate we need to define the message so the fact that experience first brands started happening right so that's the other thing that we need to look at how is it that uh, these brands have built themselves from scratch it's not like some they collaborated with some major marketing uh, so, sorry uh, agencies and built the brand right and you're seeing the speed of those small uh, brands internet belt brands uh, coming up right right whether it's a uh, dollar shave club or billy razor or here for instance right beardo and super bottoms and there are tons of brands right like you go down and right, suddenly like i find myself buying more and more of those kind of brands i go looking for uh, let's say a cherry blossom or wally's uh, shoe polish and i find suddenly this uh, this home spun internet brand that is op- offering me a shoe shampoo and something else and something else and next thing i've ordered like a grand worth of stuff and it's entirely some brand that i've not heard of right that's just come up surfaced out there so that is an experience that's happening right so this this is the age of internet brands in the sense like it or not of course brands are not uh, built overnight but you get that thing real suddenly overnight you're you're experiencing new brands and you're kind of they're becoming part of your stuff so that's the other thing and what else can i think of i think the other thing is to keep moving fast right as this whole facebook has has this credo i don't know they still follow it move fast and break things but uh, i think the uh, everybody's breaking things all the time governments are breaking things right now tiktok was broken by the indian government in that sense people are breaking things internet is breaking things people are trying to break the internet so everybody is breaking things all the time right so your only thing is to say how do i move between the cracks and and find these opportunities and kind of say uh, make the most of it and move on right so i think that that whole thing about uh, can you can you change faster than the change that's happening that's almost impossible but at least can you keep pace right or can you be at least just two steps behind it's a function of how how where where you are compared to change so that's the other thing i think agencies are i think the agency that are better at it are going to come out uh, better and going to going to win this uh, because anything that pace of it is just going faster and faster so bottom line i would say at the end of it is to kind of see how fast you can keep learning and learning is the only way up and out amazing thank you so much for your time it was amazing chatting with you today Thank Thanks you so much. much. Stay safe, stay connected. Thank you. You too. You too. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.